Hey guys, this is Jerry from DIYontheweb.com with a popular request on how to make a website completely free and easy. All the links will be in the description for you to check out, including a link to an article about the advantages and disadvantages of free versus paid web hosting. So the first thing you want to do is go to DIYontheweb.com slash free website and open the two links at the top to triple zero web host and dot tk. Once you're on the free hosting website, the first thing you want to do is click the orange order now button. This will take you to a page where you can enter the domain, name, email and password. Be sure to pick a domain which is available and it must be a .tk extension for it to be completely free. So for this tutorial, I'll be using diyfreewebsite.tk. Please be aware if you pick a .tk domain which is taken, you'll have to complete the sign up process again. A link will be on screen to a website where you can check if your domain is available. After you've finished entering your details, just enter the CAPTCHA, check the terms of service box and click create my account. Now, while we're waiting for the web host company to send us our activation email, we will go ahead and register our free domain. Now you're on the domain website, enter the domain you wish to use. After you've done this, go check if the web host company has sent you the activation email. If so, go ahead and activate your account by clicking the link in the email. Once you've activated your account, a free web host will then start to build your server and host. Just keep refreshing until the status says active and it asks you to go to the cPanel. The cPanel is where you control your website's backend. Once you're on the cPanel, you should see an info message at the top. Copy the name servers down and go back to the domain register. Be sure to check the use DNS button and your own DNS. I will show you what happens when you use the wrong option at first. Below where you put your DNS in, you can set your registration length. I'd recommend you set it to 12 months. When you're finished, just enter the CAPTCHA and click sign up. As you can see, two errors will pop up, hostname invalid and IP invalid. Make sure you click your own DNS button and not .tk DNS service. Next to the server name, just put your two name servers in. After you've finished, just click sign up. Next, you can choose the method you want to register. Since I'll be using email, I'll uncheck the share box, click email address and enter in my email. After you've entered in your email, just click next and three boxes for your name and password will drop down. After you've entered those in, just click the green create account button. Now, the domain registrar will thank you for signing up and get you to activate the domain. You can activate your account by looking for the email they just sent you. In the email, just copy the confirmation code, go back to the domain website and enter it in. Click confirm and they will thank you again for registering a domain. After you've done this, go back to the web host cPanel. After you're back on the web host cPanel, scroll down and look for the icon which says your FTP details. These details will be used on the program called FileZilla and is used to upload your files onto the server. Near the top of the FileZilla program, you can enter the same details which the website tells you. The only thing different is that instead of the host name, you need to enter the IP address from the right sidebar as it takes a couple of minutes for your domain to be active. After you've finished copy and pasting all the details, click the quick connect button. FileZilla will then connect to your website's servers. After it's logged in, the next step is to install WordPress. First, you want to go to wordpress.org. After you're on the website, just click the blue download WordPress button. Then, on the next page, click the same download WordPress button. WordPress will now start downloading. After it's finished downloading, you want to open it up using WinRAR. After it's up, click Extract To and choose an easy place to access it, such as the desktop. When it's finished extracting, open the WordPress folder up, highlight everything inside it and drag it to your public HTML folder on FileZilla. Now, FileZilla will upload the files to the server. This is a lengthy upload as free hosts are generally slow. If a message pops up that there is a duplicate file, just click overwrite and set it to always use this setting. After about 20 minutes, it should have finished uploading. After it's finished uploading, go back to your web host and open up your domain in the new tab. After you've opened your website in the new tab, go back to your cPanel by clicking list accounts and go to cPanel. Now, just scroll down and find MySQL under software and services. Once you're on the MySQL page, enter a database name, username and password. I just like to keep it simple and have identical database names and usernames, both called WP. After you've finished, click create database and go to your website. On your website, click create configuration file and let's go on the next page. Now just simply enter the hostname, database name, 
username and password which you created before. Make sure you enter everything incorrect. After you've entered it all in, just click submit. After you've clicked submit on the next page, just click run this install. On the next page, just enter your site details. Don't worry too much about this step as you can edit it again when you're logged in. If you don't want your website to appear in Google while it's new, uncheck the privacy box at the bottom. After you've finished, just click install WordPress. WordPress has now been installed, congrats. Click the login button and log in with the details you created. You've now logged into your WordPress dashboard, which is the place where you can edit how your website looks. This is primarily where you'll be most of the time, probably writing posts. This is exactly like it is on a paid host, except it's a bit slower. Please make sure you like, favorite and comment this video and please read the articles in the description about free hosts as they generally aren't the most reliable hosting plans. If you plan on making a business or carrying high traffic, then you should go with paid hosting as free hosts and free domains can take your website or domain whenever they want to, no questions asked. So if you do continue to use free hosting, please remember to back up your website frequently.